from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of Dell Technologies World. Digital experience, brought to you by Dell Technologies. Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Dell Tech World 2020. With me is Jeff Boudreau, the President and General Manager of Infrastructure Solutions Group at Dell Tech. Jeff, always good to see you, my friend. How you doing? Good, and good to see you. Yeah, I wish we were hanging out at a Sox game or a Pats game, <laughs> but uh, I guess this will do. But uh, you know, it was about a year ago when you took over leadership of ISG. Uh, I actually had, I, we had that sort of brief conversation. You were in the room with Jeff Clark. I thought it was a great, great choice. Uh, how you doing? H how you feeling? Any sort of key moments uh, the past 12 months that you, you feel like sharing? Sure. So I said, first I want to say uh, uh, I do remember that about a year ago. So uh, thank you for uh, for reminding me. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a very interesting year, right? It's been uh, it's been one year. It was in September. It was one year since I took over ISG, um, but I'm feeling great. So thank you for asking. I hope you're doing the same. Uh, and I'm really optimistic about where we are and where we're heading. Uh, as you know, it's been an extremely challenging year and a very unpredictable year, as we've all experienced. And uh, I'd say for the you know, the first part of the year, especially starting in March on, I've been really focused on the health and safety of our, you know, the families, our, our customers and our team members of the team. Uh, and a lot of it's been shifting, you know, in regards to helping our customers around, you know, work from home or, or education and learn from home. And, you know, during all this time though, I'll tell you as a team, we've accomplished a lot. And there's a handful of things that I'm very proud of. You know, first and foremost, I'd say it's around the customer experience. Uh, we've delivered on our best quality in our product NPS scores in our entire history. So something I'm extremely proud of during this time. Uh, around our innovation, our innovation engine, we part of the entire portfolio, which you're well aware of. We had nine launches in nine weeks back in that May and June timeframe. So something I'm really proud of the team on. Uh, and then last, I'd say it's around the team. And right, we shifted about 90% of our workforce from the office to home. You know, from an engineering team that can be, you know, 85% of my team is engineers and writing code. And so, you know, people are concerned about that, but we didn't skip a beat. So, you know, pretty impressed by the team and what they've done there. So, you know, the strategy remains unchanged. Uh, you know, we're focused on our customers, integrating across the entire portfolio and the businesses like VMware and, and really focused on gaining share. So despite all the uncertainty in the market, I'm pretty pleased with the team and everything that's been going on. So, uh, yeah, it's it's been it's been an interesting year, but uh, it's really great. And I'm really optimistic about what we have in front of us. Yeah, I mean, there's not much you can do or control uh, about the macro condition, uh, and it you know it's 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 dealt to us, and we have to deal with it. I mean, in your space, it's there's sort of countervailing things here. One is, look, you're not selling laptops and endpoint security. That's not your business, right? You're it's in the data center, <laughs> and, and so. But the the flip side of that is, you mentioned your portfolio refresh. You know things like power store. You got product cycles now now kicking in. So so that can be you know a buffer. Uh, what are you seeing with with power store and what's the uptake look like there? Sure. Well, specifically, uh, let me take a step back in the regards to the portfolio. So first, you know, the portfolio itself is a direct reflection in the feedback from all our part partners and our customers over the last couple of years. Um, and to ramp up that innovation, I spent a lot of time over the last few years simplifying under the power brands, which you're well aware of, right? So we had a lot of for legacy EMC and legacy Dell is really how do we simplify it under a, a set of brands, really over delivering innovation on a fewer set of products, but really accelerating in, in exceeding customer needs. And we did that across the board. So from Power Edge servers, you know, Power Max, the high end storage, the Power Vault, all that we did in year one. And just most recently, you know, as part of the, the big launches, we had Power Scale, we have Power Flex for software to find, and then of course the new flagship offer for the mid range, which is Power Store. Um, specifically to Power Store, the momentum has been building uh, since our launch uh, back in May and the feedback from our partners and our customers has been fantastic. And we've had a lot of big wins against you know, a, lot of, you know, a lot of our core competitors. A couple examples, one is Arrow Electronics, uh, a Fortune 500 global electronics supplier. Uh, they leverage Power Store to provide you know, basically both you know, enterprise computing and storage needs uh, for, their, for their broader bases around the world. Uh, and they're really taking advantage of the four to one data reduction, really helping them simplify their capacity planning uh, and really improve operational efficiencies, specifically without impact and performance. So it's, it's one, we're giving the data reductions, but there's no impact on performance, which is a huge uh, value prop for, for Arrow. Uh, another big customer is Dickinson Wright, a global law firm. Uh, and they're reporting to us that over 90, uh, they've had a 90% reduction in their rack space. And they've had over five times the performance over a uh, core competitors, uh, storage systems, 
uh, as they've deployed power store around the world really and, and it's really been helping them to easily migrate workloads across so the feedback from the customers and the partners has been extremely positive um, they're really citing benefits around the architecture the flexibility the architecture around the microservices the containers they're loving the VMware integration. They're loving the high, you know, the, the predictable data reduction capabilities in line with inline performance. So no performance penalties with data efficiencies, uh, the workload support. I'd say the, the, the other big things around the anytime upgrades is another big thing that customers are really talking about. So very excited uh, and optimistic in regards to as we continue to ramp PowerStore in the second half of the year into next year, really is the full full year for PowerStore. So can I ask you about that, that, that inline yep. data reduction with, with no yep. performance hit, is that new IP? I mean, you're not doing some kind of batch data reduction, right? Is it no, it's, it's new IP, it's all patented. We've actually done a lot of work in regards to our technologies. Um, there's some of the things we talk about GPUs and DPUs and smart NICs and things like that. Uh, we've used some offload engines to help with that. So between the software and the hardware, we've had leveraged new IP. So we can actually provide the pr predictable data reduction, but right with the performance customers need. So we're not going to have a trade-off in regards to uh, you get more efficiencies and less performance or more performance and less efficiency. So that's, that's interesting. That. Yeah, when I talk to the chip guys, they talk about the sort of, you know, the, the, the storage offloads and other offloads. And we're seeing these alternative processors really start to hit the market. I mean, NVIDIA is the obvious one, but you're seeing others as well. Uh, and you're really, it sounds like you're taking advantage of that. Yeah, it's a huge benefit. I mean, we should, you know, with our partners, if it's Intel's and NVIDIA's and folks like that, Broadcom's, it's really leveraging the great inner innovation that they do plus our innovation. So if, you know, the sum of the parts can, you know, equal more, it's a benefit to our customers. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So it sounds like COVID hasn't, you know, changed your strategy. I was talking to, to, to Dennis Hoffman and he was saying, look, you know, fundamentally we're, we're executing on the same strategy, you know, tactically there's things that we do differently, but, 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 but what's your, summarize your strategy coming into to 2021, you know, so we're still early in this decade. What are you seeing as the trends that you're trying to take advantage of? What are you excited about? Maybe some things that uh, keep you up at night. Yeah, so I'd say, you know, I'll, I'll stay with what Dennis said, you know, it's our, our strategy is not changing as a company. You probably heard that from Michael and from Jeff and obviously Dennis just recently, but for me, it's a two pronged approach. One's all about winning the consolidation, the core infrastructure markets that we participate in today. So think service storage network. Um, we're already a clear leader across all those segments that we serve and are, you know, we'll continue to innovate within our existing product categories. And you saw that with the nine launches in the, in the nine weeks. And my point on that one is we're going to always make sure that we have best to breed offers. If it's a three tier a two tier or converge or hyper converge offer, we want to make sure that we serve that and have the best innovation uh, possible. In addition to that though, the secondary piece of the strategy really is around how do we differentiate value across or innovating across ISG, you know, Dell technologies and even the broader ecosystems. And some of the examples I'll give you right now that we're doing um, is a, if you think about innovating across ISG, that's all about providing an improved customer experience. So a set of solutions and offers that really help simplify customer operations, right? And really give them better TCOs or a better SLA. An example of something like that's Cloud IQ. Uh, it's a SaaS based offer that we have that really helps provide great insights and telemetry to our customers that helps them simplify their IT operations. And it's a major step forward uh, towards you know, autonomous infrastructure, which is really what they're asking for. So customers are hey, very happy with the work we've done around day one you know, faster time to value, but now it's like day two and beyond. How do you really help me kind of accelerate the operations and really take that away from me? Um, the other big piece is innovating across Dell technologies. And, you know, we do this with VMware now uh, uh, live today, and that's just writing. So things like VxRail is an example uh, where we work together and we're the clear leader in HCI. Um, things like Dell Tech Cloud, uh, when we built in VM, uh, VCF or VMware Cloud Foundation in Tanzu, delivering an industry leading hybrid cloud platform. Uh, just recently at VMworld, I'm sure you heard about it, but Project Monterey was just announced and that's a, an effort we're doing with VMware and some other partners that are really about the next generation of infrastructure. Um, you know, and I guess taking it up a notch uh, out of the infrastructure and ISG phase, you know, some of the areas that we're going to be looking at for end-to-end -end, uh, solutions to help our customers are around six key areas. I'm sure John Rose talked about this in the past, but things like cloud, edge, 5G, AI, ML, data management, and security. So those will be the big things you'll see us lean into uh, as the strategy is consistent, some big themes that you'll see us lean into going into next year. Yeah, I mean, it is consistent, right? You guys have always sort of tried to ride the waves, you know, vector your portfolio into those waves and add value. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm particularly impressed with, you know, your, your focus on customer experience. I mean, I think that's a huge deal. Uh, you know, in the past, a lot of companies, yours included, your, your predecessor, you know, EMC, hey, 
throwing so many products at me, I can't, I, I, I don't understand the portfolio. So, I mean, focusing on that I think is huge right now because people want that experience you know, to be more cloud-like and that's, that's what you got to deliver. What about any news from, from Dell Tech World? Any, any announcements that you, you want to highlight that we can talk about? Sure, and, and actually just touching back on the point you had now about the simplification, that is a major tenet of mine in regards to the organization. So there's three key components that I drive. One's around customer focus, and that's keeping customers first and foremost in everything we do. Two is around accelerating that innovation engine. And three is really bringing everything together as one team. So we provide a better outcome to our customers. Um, you know, and that simplification effort that you talked about is, is core to what we're driving. So I want to do uh, less things, I guess, better in, in, in the notion of how we do that. And what that means to me is as I make decisions to, what, to move away from other technologies and we really leverage our best of breed IP, shared IP, that's technology IP, people IP, um, I can, you know, I can exceed customer needs in those markets that we're serving. So it actually allows me to accelerate my innovation engine because I shift more and more resources onto the newer stuff. Now uh, for Dell Tech World, yes, we got some cool stuff coming. You probably heard about a few of them. Uh, we're going to be announcing a project called Project Apex. Hopefully you've been briefed on that already. This isn't new news or I'll be in trouble. Uh, but that's really around uh, our strategy about delivering simple, consistent as a service experiences for our customers, uh, bringing together our Dell technology as a service offering and our cloud strategy together. Um, and also our technology offerings and our go-to-market all under a single unified effort, which Allison Dew will be leading um, you know, on behalf of our executive leadership team. Right. Um, so that's one big area. And then it's also another big one that I'll talk about is uh, as we expand our as a service offers, and we think there's a big power to that in regards to our Dell Technologies Cloud Console. So we'll be, uh, we'll be launching a new cloud console that'll provide you know uniform experience across all the IT resources and give users an ability to instantly manage every aspect of their cloud journey with just a few clicks. So going back to your broader point, it's all about simplicity. Yeah, so yep, we definitely all over Apex. <clears throat> and that's something I wanted to ask you about. I mean. This notion of as a service, it really, it's a requiring kind of a new mindset, certainly from a pricing and how you, you talk about the customer experience. The, you know, it's a whole new customer experience. You're, you're basically giving them access to, you know, what I would consider more of a platform uh, and, and giving them some greater flexibility. Yeah, there's some constraints in there, but of course, you know, they're physical. You can only put so much capacity in before him. But the idea of being able to dial up, dial down, you know, within certain commitments is, is I think a powerful one. How does it change the way in which you, you think about how you go about developing products um, just in terms of, you know, this API economy, infrastructure as code, how you, how you converse about those products internally and externally. How do you see that shaking out? So, so Dave, Dave, that's an awesome question. And, and it's actually for, it's front and center for everything we do. Obviously, you know, customers want choice and flexibility in what they do. And to your point, as we evolve more and more to, as a service, you know, specific product and product brands and logos aren't probably the way of the future. It's the services, it's the experience that you provide in regards to how we do that. So if you think about me, you know, in, in infrastructure, making infrastructure as a service, you really want to define what that customer experience is, that SLA that they're trying to, to, to realize. And then how do we make sure that we build the right solutions, products, feature functions to enable that? A lot of that goes back to the core engineering stuff that we need to do, right? And a lot of that stuff's about making sure that we have the right things around, if it's around developer community, if it's around API rich, it's around SDKs, it's all about how do we leverage, if it's internal source or external open source, if you will, it's regards to how do we do that. You know, a thing that I think we all, you know, which you're well aware of, but we all have to keep in mind is that the cloud native applications are, are really relevant to both the on-premise as well as the off-premise. So think about things around portability, reusability. You know, those are the, some great examples of just kind of how we think about this as we go forward. But those modern applications were required modern infrastructure. And regardless of how that infrastructure is abstracted, you know, just think about things like disaggregation or composability or internet-based computing. It's just, it's a huge trend that we have to make sure we're thinking of. So as we, we disaggregate between the physical layers to the to software layers and how we provide that to a service, you know, that could be, you know, think of a modern container-based uh, asset that could be repurposed. Either it could be on a purpose-built thing, it could be deployed in a converge or hyperconverge, or it could be deployed as a software feature in a cloud. And that's really how we're thinking about that in regards as we go forward. So. We're, we're talking about building modern assets or components that can be, you write once, reuse many type model, and we can deploy that wherever you want because of some of the abstraction and disaggregation that we're going to be doing. Yeah, I mean, I can really see, 
And I can see customers in the, in the, in the near term saying, oh, I don't care so much about the product. I, I want the fast one or, yeah. or I want the cheaper one. You know, well, it's, it's kind of funny you talk about that. I talk about the SLAs. If you think about that, in regards to you know, if maybe it's on a specific brand or, or or portfolio, you look into it and you say, hey, what's the service level that I'd want? And to your point, it's like, hey, for compute or for storage, it's really going to end up being the specific SLA, and that's around performance or latency or cost or resiliency. They want it, they want that experience and that that you know. And that's what they're going to be looking for at the end, the end state. And that's what we have to deliver as an engineering. So there's an opportunity here for you guys that I wonder if you could comment on. And, and that's the storage admin that you know, EMC essentially created. You know, you get this army of people that, you know, pretty good at provisioning LUNs, although that's not a really, that's not a great career path for folks, but, 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 but programmability is. And, and this notion of infrastructure is, is, is code. As you, as you make your systems more programmable, is there a, a skill set opportunity to take that army of constituents that you guys help train and, and grow and, and over their careers and bring them along into sort of the next decade, this new era? I, I think the, the easy answer is yes. Um, I, and obviously that's a hard thing to do when you go forward. Um, but I think embracing the change and the evolution of change, I think is a great opportunity. And I think there is, um, I mean, if you look, step back and you think about data management, right? And you think about all the, you know, all data is not created equal. And, and um, you know, and it has a life cycle, if you will. And so, if it's on edge to core to cloud, or depending, think about data vaults and data uh, mobility and all that stuff. There's going to be a bunch of different personas, and people are touching data along the way. I think the IT admins and the storage admins are just one of those personas that we have to help serve. And we we talk about how do we make them heroes, if you will, in regards to their broader environment. So, if they're providing, um, if they evolve and really help provide a modern infrastructure that really enables you know, infrastructure as a code or infrastructure as a service, you know, they become an IT hero, if you will, for the rest of the team. So I think there's a huge opportunity for them to evolve as the technology evolves. Yeah, so you, you, you talked about, you know, your families, your, 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 your employees, your team. Um, so you've, you've obviously focused on them. You got your products going, hitting all, all the, the, the marks. How are you spending your time these days? Oh, these days, right now, well, we're in the, we're in our, our cycle for fiscal 22 planning, right? And right now, a lot of that's about the specific markets we're serving. It's going to be about the strategy and making sure that we have people focused on those things. So it really comes back to some of the strategy tents we're driving for next year. You know, as I said, our focus uh, big time, well, I guess for, the, for this year is one is consolidation of the core markets, major focus for me. Uh, two is going to be around winning in storage. And I want to be very specific, it's winning mid-range storage. And that was the, one of the big reasons why power store came. That's going to be a big focus. Um, and then it's really making sure that we're, we're, we're delivering on the as a service stuff that we just talked about in regards to all the technology and innovation that's required to really provide that customer experience. And then lastly, it's making sure that we take advantage of some of these growth factors. So around, you're going to see, a, Dennis probably talked to you a lot about telco, but telco and edge and as a service and cloud, those things are just going to be you know, key to everything I do. So if you think about from core infrastructure to some of these emerging opportunities, it's uh, that's where I'm spending all my time. Well, it's a it's a big business and a really important one for, for Dell. Jeff Boudreau, thanks so much for coming back in theCUBE. Really a, a pleasure seeing you. I hope we can see each other face to face soon. You too, thank you for having me. Uh, you're very welcome. And thank you for watching everybody. Keep it right there. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE. Our continuing coverage of Dell Tech World 2020. We'll be right back right after this short break.